Hey, good morning, everyone. I believe we'll all we'll get going uh, this morning. Just be cognizant of uh, everyone's time. Uh, so just to, to start, uh, for those who don't uh, know me, my name is Andrew Rashby. I'm the manager of accessibility services at, uh, at Queens uh, with the Human Rights and Equity Office. Uh, I am joined today by our speaker, Elliot Bartz, and uh, we also have an ASL interpreter that uh, the screen should be pinned as well. So if you do uh, require the service, you can send me a uh, private message or, or message of the ASL just so they have an idea of uh, to whom they're they're, they're uh, addressing and could speak uh, on their behalf if, if necessary. Uh, so I believe by now everyone is quite accustomed to Zoom and Zoom controls. Uh, speaking with, with Elliot earlier, Elliot is, is quite happy to receive questions to route the presentation. So if you would be so kind as to just uh, use the raise hand function, depending on your your version of Zoom, it should be on your reactions uh, button down on your toolbar, down across the bottom of your screen, should have the raise hand function there. Um, you can also use the chat feature to type any questions. Um, I will field the chat and the raise hand function on behalf of Elliot. So Elliot, you do not have to worry about that. Right. Um, so hopefully that should address all our, our questions. The session is also uh, closed captioned. You can turn on caption should you require that. Um, by again, going down to the Zoom bar at the bottom of the screen and turning on the closed caption feature. So to begin, uh, I will uh, give a, a land acknowledgement. So to begin, let us acknowledge that Queens is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. We are grateful to be able to live, learn, and play on these lands. And I know uh, several people are joining from outside the Kingston Queens community. Um, so please take a moment of reflection wherever you are, wherever you join us, to, to whose land you are on. Uh, thank you very much. So, Elliot Bortz, they, them, is yep. a new public speaker focused on spreading education and awareness on queer and disabled community. They are trans non-binary, queer with multiple disabilities. They speak as an expert on their own experience navigating an ableist, queerphobic, capitalist world, the medical system, amen to that, and public access. They subscribe to the social model of care, universal design, and radical love. They are a visual artist, poet, baker, and blogger. So please join me in a warm welcome to Elliot Moritz. Welcome, Elliot. The floor Thank is you, yours. Andy. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm so not used to the Zoom platform. Um, it's it takes a little bit of the connection out of it. Um, but I am here in my living room. Um uh, ready to chat to you all about disability and queerness and my experience within it. 
Um, I'd love to say uh, a quick shout out to Sue here, who is going to be my interpreter today. Um, I'm really grateful that she's able to be here, um, especially as somebody who is hard of hearing. Um, so I do have the volume up max today. So if there's some feedback, I'm sorry about that. Um, and yeah, so let's get um, this sort of presentation going. Um, first of all, I'd love to just introduce myself um, to any of you who don't know me. Um, my name is Elliot Moritz. Um, I'm 26 years old. Um, I am a little person. I have a chondroplasia dwarfism. Also, sorry, I speak way too quickly. <laughs> um, but um, I'm trans non-binary. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I, as I said, I'm a little person. I have um, chronic pain. Um, I'm hard of hearing and autistic. Um, so I stand at the intersection of um, a bunch of queer identities, but also a bunch of disabled identities. Um, so my situation is rather unique. Um, but I've learned lots of things because of it, which I'm really grateful for. Um, I'm a visual artist um, and I'm a public speaker. Um, this is the first time I'll be doing this on my own. I'm usually um, accompanied by other speakers. Um, but yes, I also, as you can see on my on this post here, I do run a blog on dwarfism um, on Tumblr. And you can access that um, through the link at the bottom here. Um, for those who are visually impaired, I'll just visually describe myself a second here. Here I have a photo of myself uh, speaking publicly. Um, I'm about four foot two. Um, I am fat. I am queer. I have green hair, though now it is purple. Um, and in the photo here, I'm standing um, in front of a microphone um, dressed in blue and black. Um, today, I am wearing a um, floral shirt. I've got big red beads as a necklace. I've got some sun moon earrings. Um, I wear a little bit of eyeliner. I have a beard. I have purple curly hair. And behind me is a non-binary flag. Um, despite the fact that this is a disability talk, um, I am a queer person and I believe that my identity comes with me. Um, so a lot of today is gonna be on the intersectionality between my queerness and disability. I see in the chat, we have a few questions. I don't know if we wanna pause for a moment. Um, if Andrew wants to pop back in or not. Um, but... I will. Um, there is just a few statements I just said that will distribute the slides later on today to, uh, mm -hmm. to everyone. And uh, somebody great, Christian, thank you, Tony, uh, put the uh, URL to your blog in the chat as well. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I believe a lot of this will be available afterwards, as Andrew said. Um, this video is being recorded as well, so it'll be accessible later. So today's goal is, here I have a slide with a disabled pride flag as well as an inclusivity flag. Today's goal is to touch on some intersectionality, some intersections, um, between the queer and disabled community um, to highlight the value of disabled knowledge across all social movements and to inspire further education on the disabled community. As a person in Kingston, especially in someone in such a small city, despite the fact that there are lots of queer spaces, I find that my disability is something that's often left behind. And um, because Kingston is a very inaccessible city. Um, so a lot of this is gonna be a little bit of um, info on how we can make that a bit more of an inclusive space and some resources for that. 
Um, before I get going, I'm gonna define some terms. Um, so crip queer is a term that I use to self-identify. Um, crip and queer are reclaimed terms that umbrella fluid and ever-changing identities while rejecting linear systems of sorting. The reason for this is because despite the fact that like a lot has been happening for the communities, um, both communities have a history of rigid sorting, which has allowed us to, like for the disabled community, a lot of it was institutionalization. It was a lot of segregation. It was a lot of separation from people. And the reason queer is so important is because it allows us to like express our identity while also having a little bit of ambiguity. It creates an umbrella term that's very diverse and embraces the multitudes of identities within it. Crip queer is dynamic, it's shared, it's diverse and fluid. Crip queer culture is radical love for all bodies and identities. Pre-disabled um, is a term which replaces able-bodied um, under the framework that all people will experience disability within their lifetime, whether through injury, illness, or age. Um, the fact that disability is viewed as this very non-binary and not binary, not non binary. Um, this very, it's an exception to the rule often. It's viewed as special cases. We treat disability, especially in educational, sec ed educational spaces, as an individual problem versus a whole com vast community that needs to be represented and needs to be accommodated for within public spaces and social dynamics and medical institutions. Um, when we treat disability not as an exception to the rule, but not ex as an exception, but a rule to the human design, we put more work into universal design and community care. Um, a lot a lot of disabled culture I've found is the underbelly of so many other social movements. Um, here I have a diagram that I've made of a green house. Um, it's very simplistic. Um, inside it, there is the diversity, the, sorry, the inclusivity flag. And at the foundation is the disability pride flag. The reason for this is because this is a physical, visual representation um, of what I believe dis disabled knowledge and crip knowledge to represent. A lot of it is learning to embrace bodies and body minds at all levels of ability, at all levels of mobility. A lot of it is something I've found to really help me embrace who I am and who my community is. Um, and yeah, I think that so often when we talk, when I talk to queer people, when I talk to other marginalized groups, a lot of it, a lot of the knowledge that they're talking about, a lot of the developments that they're making could have been learned if they were also learning about disabled justice. Um, and then are only really interacted with when, like a great example is trans healthcare. A lot of it is like going through top surgery, going through, through hormone therapy is often the first introduction that trans people, that pre-disabled trans people will get to interacting with the medical sector a lot of it is sort of a slap in the face, realizing that our medical system is not where it needs to be and that we're not creating inclusive spaces for people who are almost always um, of some sort of marginalization entering um, medical sectors. 
And a lot of this knowledge could have been passed on through disabled people. Um, but I think that disabled knowledge is often left behind. And we know this because like, we know this through the cycle of inaccessibility. We know that because we're not letting disabled people into physical spaces, we're losing the knowledge that, dis that the disabled community has. And it's knowledge that's, that's so incredibly vital to expanding on body autonomy, on inclusive healthcare, on radical love, on a lot of the teachings that queerness teaches us. A lot of it can is so embedded into disabled culture. Um, and I find that when I enter these spaces, when I enter queer spaces, spaces especially, um, it's through the help of my friends. It's through putting up with pain that day. It's through managing myself because Queens Campus is an incredibly inaccessible space. We know this. We know that Queens Campus um, has become very well known for its lack of inclusion of not only disabled people, but also just like so many other marginalized groups. Um, and that really needs to change. And I hope that with the information that I can provide and like the resources I can provide, I hope that Queens, not only their students, but also their faculty can then really um, learn a lot from the disabled community and expand their thinking on what they view their world to be. Um, the following slide is, sorry, I also need to slow down. I know I'm somebody who speaks very quickly. Um, the next slide, I have a Venn diagram. Um, the left circle is green and reads disability. The right circle is yellow and reads queerness. And the center circle is blue and reads bullet points, systematic oppression, the ugly laws to public access, radical visibility, bodily autonomy, community care, and radical love. These are all things that exist within the intersection of disability and queerness. Um, there's been a lot of parallel oppression within our history, whether it be through the eagle, like we both, they're both communities that have been made illegal in public spaces. They're both communities that want inclusive health care. They're both communities that have embraced this radical sense of self-care and sense of community care that I've just fallen in love with as a crip queer person. I'm I'm so proud of being at this intersection because it's allowed me to reject so much from the capitalist society that we live in. And and yeah, it's just, I love being a crip queer. Um, I now have a slide with a photo of, there's a woman um, or a femme presenting person sitting in a wheelchair and behind them is a staircase with their, it looks as though their classmates, they're holding some books, are ascending those staircases, leaving this person behind. Below it, I have a quote from a book that I'll be um, sharing with y'all a little bit later. Um, and the quote is, one way ableism works is that disabled people are not even present within the imaginations of a supposedly radical future. This is something I interact with very deeply as a Queens, not a Queens, as a Kingston, um, as a member of the Kingston community, because I think that we're adding lots of wonderful things for the queer community. I think we're building lots of safe spaces and we're, there's countless events. I just went to a dancing circle. There's been amazing things that I've watched the, I've watched as the pride 
parade has grown, as the trans community has become a lot more present um, in a lot of the decisions and, and how the like Kingston culture has changed. I've loved that. I loved that like within my lifetime, there's been this plethora and of growth for queer spaces. And yet, as somebody who's disabled, I feel as though I'm unwelcome in a lot of these spaces because I'm physically unable to access them. And an example of that would literally be the dance circle that I, that I went to. And I was only able to go to it with the help of my friends. I had people there with me who could carry my role later up the stairs and who could help me get there and back. And the only reason I could show up is because of those people, because I'm constantly fighting and making up for inaccessibility through the help of my friends, which a lot of disabled people can't do. I exist within privilege. I am not in a wheelchair. I don't use a wheelchair. I am, my spoons are relatively like good enough to get me through the day on most accounts. Oh, we're a little, oh, bless. Okay, I thought we were frozen, but we're fine. Um, I am white. I am not an immigrant. I am treated a lot better by, by the Kingston community than a lot of other disabled people. And yet I'm still faced with a lot of this, these inaccessibilities that are, that are making the Kingston crip queers feel incredibly uninvolved, which is devastating. Um, but yeah, here I have a photo. Um, it's a black and white photo, but don't let that fool you. This was taken, I believe in the 1970s, somewhere around there. It's a rally. Um, it's a photo of a rally in black and white including a diverse group of disabled people, including Judith Human and Justin Dark Jr., holding a large banner that reads, Injustice Anywhere is a Threat to Justice Everywhere. Um, the quote is from Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I especially love this photo because next to Judith Human is a little person, who, which we don't get to see a lot in, in like modern photography. I find a lot of the a lot of the art that captures people like me are is rather old um and yeah I I love this photo a lot and I wanted to share it because I think that so much can be learned from the disabled community and so much can be improved in Kingston if we include accessibility in the way that we function, in the way that we develop, in the way that we grow. And that is something that Kingston is doing. Despite our size, we are changing and developing all the time. And a community that is forever left behind is the disabled community. And I feel like that knowledge gets lost, which is devastating because I find so much joy in being disabled like of course I have days where my pain is bad and surgeries are needed and all kinds of turmoil but my disability has taught me to radically love myself in ways that my queer identity does as well but in a way that's so core to my body that's so core to who I am, despite what I can offer to capitalism, despite what I can offer to a system that's not built for me, to a world that's not built for me, especially as somebody who's a little person. Um, the very furniture I'm sitting on, I'm, I've got four boxes before below my feet to keep them up. Um, but yes, um, but yeah, this is another quote that I really love. Um, another from a book that I'm going to be um, talking about. Um, next to it is a clip art photo. Um, it's a 
not clip art, stock image. It's a stock image photo of two individuals sitting in a shared wheelchair with arms around each other and smiling. The person on the right has pink skin and red hair, and the person on the left has brown skin and black curly hair. The person on the left is holding a large rainbow flag that waves above them and reads, love is love. Um, and the quote is, when we reach for each other and make the most access possible, it is a radical act of love. Love in action is when we strategize to create cross-disability access space, when we refuse to abandon each other. And yeah, um, oops, oops, goodness gracious, there we go. Um, <laughs> you can tell I, I have not done presentations in a little bit. Um, some books that I wanna share. Um, because a, a, a big part of, the, of my talk when I was given this soapbox was I wanted the chance to share as much disabled knowledge as possible within my brief 45 minutes. Um, and I do that often a lot through dialogue. I much prefer communicating back and forth and talking openly about disability, about queerness, about um, my experiences in Kingston. Um, as an autistic person, I really struggle with making linear presentations. Um, I often just make up for that in the fact that they're visually stimulating. Um, but yes, but I have some books. So um, on, they're visibly, they're visible on my presentation right now. The first one is All of Our Bodies, Disabled, sorry, all of our fam, all our families, disabled lineage, and the future of kinship, um, by Jennifer Natalia Fink. Um, I have it with me. Um, excellent book, excellent reading. Um, so this book talks about essentially the fact that due to horizontal lineage, which is when so vertical lineage is the is the notion is sorry <laughs> vertical lineage are things like race um allergies um any sort of bodily condition that's hereditary horizontal lineage are things like queerness are things like religion or um viewpoints there are things that you don't that have existed throughout the past, but you don't necessarily pass down. Like you being gay parents doesn't necessarily mean that your children are homosexual. Um, but disabled, but all our families talks about disabled lineage and the fact that because there was such a large section of like 19, like pretty much like from the 1700s to like 1970s, disabled people the way that we treated that dealt with disabled people was we would institu like institutionalize or medicalize um these people and because of that a lot of the, our disability knowledge was lost um like i my i remember my grandmother telling me that her grandfather was disabled because of the war because he experienced um um something along that line and but despite the fact that I had disability in my family I lost it and I didn't get to have that knowledge um and basically Jennifer Fink talks about how we're how our task now as people who are experiencing disabled people outside of the medical sector is to pass on disabled lineage to experience disabled knowledge generationally. Um, and it's a really, it's a really good book. Um, the next book is Care Work, um, Dreaming Disabled Justice. Um, this is by Leah Lakshmi Piepsna Samar Samarasini Sina. Um, Care Work 
I recommend this book to everyone, to everyone who doesn't know, who wants to get their, like, dip their toes into dis disability, who wants to know a baseline of disabled knowledge. Um, care work is a really good intro to all of that. It's about creating care networks. Um, and it talks about like all of the, like sort of like 101 um, disabled information. And the writer is still alive and she's amazing. She's, uh, she's a trans, um, she's a femme disabled person of color. I find it incredibly valuable to consume media that's written by intersectional people. Um, I think that when you're only talking about experiences in a vacuum, like transness in a vacuum, instead of how transness will apply to the fem feminist community, to the disabled community, to the Black community, when you strip it from all it interacts with as like complex humans, you lose so much information and knowledge. Um, so a lot of the books that I choose to read are by are written by intersectional individuals. Um, Judith Human, Being Human. This is another really good book. Um, this specifically applies to Kingston. Um, queens because judith human was responsible for a lot so like so much so many social movements but specifically she was a part of the rally that forced inclusion of disabled people within education spaces um before judith human's time it was very normal for um, disabled people to not have a post-secondary education. This is, um, so this, it's sort of like a, um, it's a memoir of her life and it's a very valuable piece of media, especially when we're talking about just like education um, within that. So it's called Being Human by Judith Human um, and it's it's very good. Um, the next book I'm suggesting is all, also all of these books are available at Indigo. Um, I want to choose books that were accessible um, to as many people as possible. They're accessible through Indigo if you want a physical copy, or there's also audiobooks as well. Crip Kinship is the next one if you want a bit of a lighter read. It's wonderful. It's um, so Crip Kinship by um, Shada Kafia. Cafe. Um, it is the disability justice and art activism of Sins Invalid. And it's very good. It's a very good read. I love the art pieces in it. If you're somebody like me who really loves art, um, specifically queer art and disabled art, this is a really good one for you. And then two others that I don't have listed here um, are Making a Home. Uh, this is by Jen Powley, Assistive Living in the Community for Young Disabled People. This is a very good book. Not all disabled people are old. Lots of us are young. Lots of illnesses can come on when you're in your 20s or younger. Um, lots of disabled people experience trauma throughout their childhood. It's very common for, dis it, it, it's shockingly common for disabled people to be young. Um, and this is a very good one. A lot of, um, this is another really good book about um, building community um, and making the home an accessible space and um, talking about that and how that branches out into the world. And my last one is Year of the Tiger. This is by Alice Wong, another amazing uh, disabled. And also all of these books are by disabled and queer um people um most of them are by disabled queer people of color this is another one alice wong is an activist she's done a bunch of other things within the disabled community um in this one a lot of she she really rethinks the memoir in this book a lot of other a lot of other writings are sort of like slice of life and 
talking about your experience and she really like was very tired of that narrative and she and she rethinks that in this book and it's so good so good um but yeah and then here's some other I want to share some folks to check out on social media um I have some photos here that I'll describe um first we have Aaron Phillips and Andrew Gerza Andrew Phillips um, is a trans woman of color with cerebral palsy. She is a model in this photo. She has, um, she's in her wheelchair. Um, she's wearing like dark velvety browns and knitted and a knitted skirt, I believe. She's got black lipstick on, um, looking absolutely stunning. Um, and below her is Andrew Gerza, who is another the activist with cerebral palsy he specifically talks about sex and sexuality within disabled people which is very so important I joke that um everything is about disability except for disability because disability is about sex um which is to say that a lot a big part of growing up as a disabled adult is reclaiming one's body and finding yourself beautiful and um relearning what sex and sexuality means for you which is a great way that it segues into queerness because that is also something that I experience as a queer person um the next photo is of Chella Man he is a deaf artist and youtuber um here he's standing um wearing a tan shirt and a white shorts and he's standing in front of this really vibrant painting that he's done he does a lot of abstract specifically outlining a lot of trans um experiences and how he's experienced his body throughout his journey and I think that he does some very good very good pieces I absolutely adore him the next photo I have is of Eliza Rain. She uses she, her pronouns. Here she's in a, her wheelchair, her black wheelchair. She's wearing a vibrant pink um, suit with, a, with only a vest on top with black buttons. Her hair is rainbow colors. It's white to purple from the tips. Um, and yes, she does lots of day-to-day -day videos. She's very good for... Um, highlighting inaccessibility and whatnot. She's a very good inter introduction to disability, um, especially if you're looking for somebody, like she does talk about adult, um, like there is adult content for within her, not like crazy adult, but like a little bit adult. Um, but she does, it's, she's a really good one for like introducing children to um, disabled people in my opinion. Um, and the last one is Aubrey Smalls. Aubrey Smalls is a little person like me. Um, he is a little person of color um, and queer. And he's currently creating a um, documentary about dwarfism and how that interacts with his life. Um, he does lots of videos and educational stuff um, on his channel as well. Um, but yes. Um, at that. Um, another resource that I'd love to share with Queens specifically um, is my sister's thesis. Um, so she, you can access her thesis through, um, I have this, um, I have a barcode up here, um, but I'm sure we can add the link at the end. We can, we can put a link in the comments, but she basically was a part of a thesis on access and inclusion, the experiences of post-secondary students with mobility-related physical disabilities. Um, really important piece of reading. She talks about queens. She talks about a bunch of um, a bunch of schools throughout Ontario, and it's basically just highlighting our incessant need to make these spaces a lot more accessible and fight for inclusion within all spaces, especially 
especially spaces that are educational, especially spaces where knowledge is shared, because I truly believe that that without disabled knowledge, we're really we're really without. We're really we're losing so much of what um, our social movements could be doing. Um, and yeah, so now is um, I'm gonna have a time for questions and conversations, um, which is honestly my main part of this of this cafe because I really want a chance to actually interact with people and um, communicate and share thoughts on specifically accessibility and queerness within um, Queens. Um, if you want to share any of your thoughts and stories or questions within Queens, but also outside of Queens, within Kingston, within anywhere, um, the floor is open. And yeah, so here is here's our our little couch. I've got a little photo of a couch here. It's a yellow um, stock image of a couch um, with orange words that say questions and conversation time.